Hello and welcome. This is Cheryl. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'm going to be sharing some creative press plate techniques using alcohol inks. I'm going to use the Every Occasion Floral Alphabet. This is the new release from Spellbinders that they sent to me to create with and share with you. And I'm going to use some different alcohol ink techniques that I thought would be fun with these alphabets. So the first thing I'm going to do is some jelly printing. And yes, you can jelly print with alcohol inks. I have them in little squeeze bottles that have about a quarter of alcohol ink and the rest is isopropyl alcohol. So it's just going to save me a step and I just squeeze it onto my jelly plate and lift it up to move it around. The white paper underneath there isn't necessary. It just helps me to lift it up to move it around as well as helps you to be able to see the color that is on there. Now you may have noticed at the beginning that one of my jelly plates is green. The greens, al green alcohol inks one time it stained it. It still works exactly the same way and that's one of the reasons why I like to use both of them together so that you can see that it works in exactly the same way. It doesn't affect it in any way. It just doesn't look as pretty. Once I have my alcohol inks on there I just leave it to completely dry and for that alcohol to dissipate. Now you could use these alcohol inks or use alcohol inks straight from the bottle and then add your isopropyl alcohol to move it around. I just just like doing it this way it just makes it easy and convenient so once these are completely dried this is what it looks like and you can see that there are some areas that have kind of resisted the alcohol and it almost creates little bubbles and um, the inks and colors have flown into each other so I have a piece of glossy alcohol ink cardstock that I've glued to or not taped sorry to my clear plate and I'm going to use some alcohol lift ink with this first technique so I've just put it on my plate I'm only using the letter T without the sentiment because the sentiment would end up being backwards if I were to put it on this press plate. I'm also using the magnet that comes with my glimmer machine to lift that plate off of the jelly plate just so that I don't distort anything um, as much as possible. Then I'm using a clean piece of paper towel and I'm just dabbing that lift ink off of the jelly plate. It's not going to lift off any of that alcohol ink. It only lifts up that uh, lifting and then clears that area for the paint in a minute. With that plate and that glossy cardstock on my uh, better press, I put it through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 and you get the combination of the different alcohol ink colors. Now you can do this technique with any alcohol ink colors. You'll notice that most of the colors kind of blend and they kind of you don't see a whole lot of distinction between a lot of the different colors and that's part of what I like about it. I'm using some folk art paint here. I like the vintage white. It's got kind of a bit of a touch of pink to it and it looks really beautiful with this color combination but you could use any light color that you want and you would want to use a light color because alcohol inks are transparent so it a different color or a dark color would affect the um, alcohol ink color. So by using a light color, you see that true color as much as possible. For the next technique, I'm just using Better Press ink and I'm doing the exact same thing I did with the Lift ink, but with Better Press ink. I'm not lifting for this. I am just stamping that um, letter onto the alcohol ink and then we will lift the entire thing. So I'm going to use my magnet from my glimmer machine and put it in my better press. It just helps me to not touch it as much as possible and then put it through the machine. Now there's nothing magic that happens with this because it just has better press ink on it. So it just creates um, the better press stamped image. I just used, re used regular cardstock for that one because it didn't really matter. So now I'm taking that same folk art paint and I'm using a brayer to put it a thin coat on my jelly plate. I like using a six inch brayer because I can get that whole plate on there without getting seams. And the cardstock that I'm using is just index stock. It's a little bit more inexpensive, a little bit thinner than regular cardstock, but this way I can use it straight on a card and I don't have to transfer it to a thicker cardstock or collage it to thicker cardstock. If you're not used to this technique, you could do this on printer paper and then pick and choose which ones you like and put them onto regular cardstock before you put them on a card. 
So I'm going to do that exact same process again. The only thing I'm changing here is I'm adding some Marabou Rainbow Shimmer. Now this is meant to be used with alcohol inks and it's gonna add just a nice sparkle. So on my plate on the left, I put it with kind of my base colors and then mix it around. For the plate on the right, I'm going to put my colors on there and then just drop some of those shimmer colors on there and not mix anything around. I'm just going to let it dry like that. And you'll see that I get a little bit more concentrated areas of the color on the one on the right where I didn't mix anything up. And you'll see just more of a subtle shimmer on the one on the left where I mixed it up and then added some more colors to it. I'm printing once again on that index stock. This is, like I said, great inexpensive stock for doing this. So if you find that you have some prints that you don't necessarily like, it's not that big of a deal. But you can see with this print that I get a little bit more of each one of those colors. I can see a little bit more. I have some areas that are a little bit light and a little bit darker because I didn't blend everything together quite as much. So you can have fun doing this and creating different backgrounds to see what technique you like best. So the next technique I'm going to do is foiling and I've got some beautiful new rose gold foil that I'm going to use with my glimmer machine, stacked everything up and used it with hammer mill cardstock. I've got a lot of foiling videos if you've never foiled before. It's exactly the same as I've done before and the alcohol ink that I'm going to use for this is Copic markers. I'm going to color those flowers with Copic markers. So for this video I'm doing all of my backgrounds and image pieces first and then I'm going to assemble them all as cards at the the end aside from one because I ended up forgetting about one and realized that I missed it at right at the very end. So I did the positive hot foiling and now I'm doing the negative hot foiling. The negative piece I'm going to use as a mat around my positive piece and I did foil both the letter as well as the sentiment that's included and I love how these press plates have the sentiment separate so you can add it to it or have it separate. Now you may have noticed when I did the negative piece there that I got a little kind of it looks like a little line in there. I think I actually had a hair in there but for using this as a mat you're never going to see it but something to keep in mind and watch out for this is the first time that I've had that. I have a few Copic markers here that I am coloring the image in. For the greens I'm using YG11 and YG63. And then for the blues for the flowers, I'm using B32 and B23. Now, these areas are so tiny, you really don't need much more than two colors. And if you wanted to, you could even just color it with one color. I always like seeing the shading in there. But if you don't uh, feel comfortable with it, you can just color it in. I didn't notice any difference or any effect the foil had with the alcohol inks. I tried to avoid the foil as much as possible. I didn't do a whole lot of coloring on top of it, but anytime I did do or if my marker went on top of it, I never noticed a difference. You do want to make sure to keep in mind what colors you're using with this because the um, Copic markers, the ink color is transparent. So if you color over the foil, you are going to see the foil underneath. It's not going to completely cover it. So it will affect the color of that foil, which is one of the reasons why I was avoiding it. I want, wanted to be able to see the beautiful rose gold that um, this foil turned out to be. And I ended up having one of my daughters help pick what color to do the flowers because I couldn't decide what color would look good with rose gold foil because I hadn't worked with it before and she um, absolutely loved road gold, rose gold. So I figured she probably had a better idea what colors would work. And these blues worked absolutely perfect. They look gorgeous with that rose gold foil. So the coloring for this is very, very simple. So if you're new to alcohol ink markers, this is a perfect project for it because they are such tiny areas. There's not a whole lot of shading in there. I just did a, just a touch of the dark color at the base of the leaves and at the base of the petals of the flowers. And then I'm going to put that aside for putting together my card later on. For the next technique, I'm using alcohol ink glitter cardstock. Now this isn't actual glitter cardstock, even though it does look like it. It's just a printed cardstock, but it's a um, non-porous surface and it works perfectly with alcohol inks and has a silver finish to it. And I'm using those same alcohol inks that I used for jelly printing at the beginning. And because they have a lot of isopropyl alcohol in there, I don't need to add any more to it. I can just use those colors right from those bottles. 
I'm using an alcohol ink blower to blow everything around. And when I want those inks to flow, I'm going to be using lots of inks and using um, a lot of air from that alcohol ink blower. Once I get to kind of like the look of the background, I will start using less of the alcohol inks and I'm going to be using the short bursts of air from that blower tool just to help that ink dry fairly quickly and not to move it around as much. For this particular background, I want there to be a point where I have a little bit more um, um, texture, a little bit more, um, like I don't want it all bl blended together really, really well. So as that background dries, and it's pretty dry right now, I'm adding less and less of each of the colors, and I'm using more short bursts of air just to help dry those colors out and stop them from spreading and blending quite as much. And this particular piece of cardstock comes at as five by seven pieces. So I'm gonna end up cutting this in half and creating two cards with it. So you'll get double duty out of this. Now, once my background is completely done, I do wanna put the lids on those bottles. Even though, they're, even though they're fine tip, they could clog a little bit if I leave them off. So you'll see that as I'm done with certain colors, I put that lid back on and then put them to the side now I just realized I forgot to mention what colors I was actually using of those alcohol inks. So I'm using cranberry for that dark red. Flamingo is the lighter pink. Stream is the darker blue color. Aqua is the lighter blue. And then pesto is the green. But these techniques will work once again with any color combination you want to use. So pick and choose your favorites. I just chose the colors for colors that I would like to see for florals as well as the greenery. So that's how I chose them. But once again, you can use whatever colors that you would like. And as you're working, you'll find that you need less and less of each of the colors. And you'll see that I'm putting less and less down. But you can stop at any time or you can keep going. It's completely your choice. If when you're working with alcohol inks, you get to a point where you hate everything, you can even spray the whole thing over with some isopropyl alcohol, blend it all out, and then work from there. So this piece is done and completely dried, so I just cut it in half, and I'm going to take the press plate, the J press plate, and I have the sentiment with it, and I'm going to press in the center of this here. So my piece of cardstock here is three and a half by five, so it's smaller than the registration mark, so I'm just making sure that I have it in the center of my clear plate there. I'm using the Better Press ink for this and just pressing that right on top of the glitter cardstock with the alcohol ink on it just to get a nice solid black image there. Once again, I'm using the Platinum 6 to press that in place and you need both the better press as well as the die cutting machine to press that in place. And look at that beautiful image. You can leave it like this, but I decided I wanted that extra texture, texture from Shine, so I'm adding some clear embossing powder on it. So this way I'm gonna be able to see that black color from the ink but it's just going to be nice and glossy and a little bit raised because of that embossing and i'm just using that embossing tool to melt that powder in place there now this is a step that you could skip if you wanted to but it is going to affect a step that i'm going to do in a moment so for the second one i'm using the t here but i'm not using the sentiment for this one here i'm only using the t i have a separate sentiment that i'm going to put on top of there and i'm using some versamark ink with this and pressing that on there putting the clear plate on the base plate on the base and then putting it through my platinum six machine once I'm done this, this one I'm going to emboss with some silver embossing powder. Now with this background, you see a touch of the silver underneath that light blue, so it ties in really, really nicely. But you can use whatever color embossing powder you want with this and then melt it with your embossing tool again. And you can see it takes really seconds to heat that powder and emboss it. So here is the two, both the J as well as the T. Now you'll notice that the flowers kind of got a little bit um, lost here. So what you can do if you want is take a, this is just a dental tool. I don't even know what they use it with dentistry. I got these off of Amazon and there's a link to them and the other supplies I'm using in the description. And I'm just dipping that into some isopropyl alcohol 
um, pressing some of that excess off and then put it in some of the petals of the flowers and blotting that off. You do need to blot it off in order to lift up that alcohol ink. Now that first one with the tea, as soon as I did it, I realized that I had silver embossing on basically silver glitter cardstock, so you really didn't see it. So I only did a few flowers with that one, and I'm going to do more with the black flowers here because it you notice the effect a lot better. Now, this is not a technique that I... Pro I, I don't think this would work if I didn't emboss that J because I think this isopropyl would affect the Better Press ink. I haven't tried it yet, but I think it would affect it, and... Um, it would start to run and bleed. Now, I could be absolutely wrong with this, and like I said, I haven't tested it, but I know it works perfectly because I have that clear embossing powder on there and it doesn't affect that ink at all because it's completely protected. But because I did this, you can see those flowers a lot better and they pop a lot more. Another thing that you could do here is you could take a different color of Copic marker or alcohol-based marker, and you can color in those areas if you wanted to make those flowers, say, a contrasting color. This piece here I wanted to show, I used that alcohol lift ink on here, and you can see that you really lost a lot of the definition of that O as well as you can't really read the sentiment to it. So if it was something that you were thinking of, I wanted to show that piece there because it's something that I intended to show how to do and when I finished that technique it just really wasn't it wasn't impressive wasn't very nice looking it kind of was meh so just something that I think it would have worked if I was able to clean my plates off and then um, put more lift ink on and do it a second time but because I had to remove that piece off of the clear plate and then put the glossy cardstock on there to do the print to get that ink off of the plate I wouldn't have been able to position that um, the glitter st stock with the alcohol inks on it in exactly the same place again so um, just a thought I just wanted to share that um, moment if uh, you wanted to try that technique that's the effect that I had. So I glued these pieces to a mat. I cut them down a little bit so they had an even mat around them and even mat with the card. And then I have a sentiment here that's foiled from a previous project that I'm just adding to the cards here. They work perfectly with the silver glitter cardstock and they're just foiled with prism foil. I'll list what the sentiments are or from the, the sets that they're from in the description down below. But these are ones that I had from before. And to foil them, you use the, the same technique that I used with foiling the O with that rose gold foil. I'm using the nail gems that I like to use in the centers of these flowers. They're just super, super tiny and you get a ton of them in these kits and they're really easy to put together or put on your cards with the Barely Art glue and the jewel picker. It's very easy to pick them up, place them in the glue and it adds just a nice center to those flowers as well as a really nice sparkle. And really, I'm going to put these gems on the centers of the flowers of most of the cards today, just because I really like them as a center to the flower. But you could easily do some stickles. You could leave them as is. They doesn't necessarily need it. I just love the sparkle as well as the slightly raised um, center to each of the flowers that these gems give them. And it's very easy to do. It takes moments when you use the liquid glue with them and just pop them in with the jewel picker. Now, as I'm done each one of these cards, I'm just popping to them to the side so that the glue can dry. I will show you all of them once the centers of the flowers have dried. There's that little line that went in there from the hair. But once again, with the uh, image over top of this, you don't actually really see it. So I'm just using that same Barely Art glue to glue everything in place and then putting a large acrylic block on each piece to hold it in place while it dries. And I'm using a variety of different mats for these cards. All the finish sizes of the cards are four and a quarter by five and a half, but you can mat them however you want. And I'm just doing different ones just to give a little bit of variety and really nothing is wrong with um, the different mat sizes. It's just personal preference. And then as you can see, I'm just adding those gems to the centers of the flowers. Next, we have the jelly print background with the um, Y with Better Press ink. And you can see that you don't see it very, very well. Like you can see it enough to do the card with this, but you don't, it's not very dark. 
I am leaving it as it is. I kind of like how kind of grungy it looks, but if that bothers you, you can take a black marker and fill it in. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I wanted it to be subtle in my background, so I'm leaving it as it is. But there is a simple way to fix it, and that's just a black marker. A black Posca pen would work just to darken that up there. So I just chose a simple mat for that. Once again, I have a foiled sentiment from a previous foiling session that I'm using with it. It says, you brighten my day, and I chose it because it started with a Y. And it is a nice light element on the front of the cards. The other thing that I'm going to do is I have some leftover flowers from my first video that I created using these um, floral, press plate, floral alphabet press plates. And I'm going to use them up and add them to the bouquets of flowers on the Y. I'm not covering all of them up. I'm just adding them once again as a little bit of a lighter colored element as well as for some texture and dimension for this card. And I think just with that subtle Y in the background and the you brighten my day and the coordinating flowers there, I really like how this card turned out. It's not my usual thing really, but it looks quite nice. I didn't want to die cut any more cards so I, or more flowers, so I just used what I had on hand and then finished the centers of those off with some more gems. And once again, these are glued in place with that same Barely Art glue. And I like using the liquid glue, especially for things like this, where I'm just placing different things because it gives them a little bit of movement, a little bit of room. I can move things around as I'm placing other things. So I can tuck something underneath um, something else, a petal or a leaf or whatnot. And I, I just have a little bit of movement. It gives a little bit of, um, makes it a little bit easier to do it like this than to have, say, a double-sided tape where something has to be placed properly. You may also find that tweezers are helpful for this because these flowers are really quite tiny. So putting having tweezers to put them in place and place them where you want them is a lot, or is very helpful rather than having to try to see things through your fingers. And once those flowers are in place and I have the gems in the centers, I just will tuck that to the side to dry. But I love the dimension that those flowers give that card. Now we're going to do the one that has the Lift Ink T to it. So I have a simple mat that coordinates with one of the colors that popped up on that jelly paint background. And I love these backgrounds because you never know what is going to pop up, what colors you're going to see. You could use the same colors for many different backgrounds and you could see that I did use the same colors for several different ones and they all look a little bit different. So that's the fun part about alcohol inks with jelly prints. It's just a different way to use them as as well as the fact that they look just a little bit different. They blend together really neatly and they make some interesting and fun backgrounds. Once again, using those gems for the centers of those flowers for a little bit of sparkle and that sparkle is going to tie in to the foiled sentiment that I used on this one as well. And once that is together, I'll put that aside to dry. Now for my Lift Ink stamped, pressed, um, tea on the glossy cardstock. I used one of the jelly prints that I wasn't going to be using for the cards today and used that as a mat on the background for a card. So that's another way that you can use those alcohol ink jelly prints so they don't need to go to waste if you're not putting your letter or whatever image you want on the center of them. And then I have another simple um, cranberry mask with that or bait behind the tea and then another simple foiled sentiment on there. Once again, putting those gems in the center. The funny thing is, is this one I had meant to put stickles in the center and it wasn't until I had the glue down that I realized that I didn't do that. So gems it is, it was apparently meant to be. You'll see my top of my head popping in here and that was because I was trying to look um, past the edge of the acrylic block. I was using the acrylic block to hold that thanks down and it was making it a little bit harder to see exactly where I wanted to put those gems. So this is the background that I had totally forgot about. I had, there was one more technique that I wanted to do and I once again forgot about it. So this one you're going to see right from the jelly print to the finished card. So I cut it down to four and a quarter by five and a half. Now this is bigger than I want the finished piece to be, but that way I can make sure to put that thing in the center of this piece and cut it down. 
I'm just using some Versamark ink and I'm using the floral letter J with the sentiment. I'm going to stamp that on there or press that on there, put it through my Spellbinders Platinum 6. This one, I'm going to use some Distress Embossing Glaze and I'm gonna use Prize Ribbon. It goes really well with the blue in the background there. And because Distress Embossing Glaze is transparent, you're going to see a little bit of variation from the alcohol ink jelly print background. Now, because there's not a whole lot of embossing on here, you're not gonna see a lot of the difference, but it is an option if you wanted to be able to see some of that texture, some of the different colors, to use a transparent embossing glaze. Once that is embossed, I can cut my background down and put that onto the front of the card. And I chose a color for the mat that is very similar to the color that was embossed and that blue that showed up there. I don't know where that blue came from because there was no blue similar to that color. But again, it's always fun to see how they blend and the different colors that come out of alcohol inks. Once that has glued and or has been sitting there and the glue has dried a little bit, I'm just using the centers or using stickles for the centers of these flowers just to have something a little bit different from those gems. Let that stickles dry and you can see a very simple but beautiful card there. Here is the alcohol lift ink pressed tea with that thanks. And here is where we took that alcohol ink from and lifted it from with another uh, foil sentiment. This one is the Y with the Better Press ink. And of course, the rose gold foiled O. This one is gorgeous for a wedding um, card. It says on your special day. We have the glitter cardstock with the J and then the glitter cardstock with the T. And I love the texture that this glitter cardstock gives those cards as well as that shine. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. I hope you have a fantastic day.